games for the RPI and all that fun stuff. What, what was your motivation to play today with, with the weather and the, the team that missed the last minute of the game? Um, yeah, I mean, I can't speak for others just to play ball. I mean, um, I, I'm very happy we played as much as we did. I think once you kind of set in the rule, the rule's a rule. I'm not sure Coach Jarvis, he was excellent to work with today. I mean, he has the reputation he does over in Nashville for a reason. He could not be a nicer guy, uh, but obviously uh, he's on the competitive side of things too. But they have to travel tomorrow. Their conference deal kind of switched as well. Um, so with both teams traveling, we didn't want to go too late tonight. And with the weather, we made a no inning after 10 o'clock. And Banky, uh, he was good tonight. And, um, you know, that might have been his first strike out of the lefty. And he did it in, with one minute in time. I know we didn't have anything to show for it, but three guys got at bats in game. Um, so that's what we want. I mean, we're supposed to be developing these guys. So in order to do so, they need to work hard outside of game day. Um, but we need to reward them and also kind of evaluate them on game day. I mean, um, you know, that's how Hollis Fanning has put himself in the position that he has. Is, by being evaluated on practice day that he's been doing working hard on those days and then getting in front of us, you know, and everybody else on a game day and throwing strikes. And, and obviously he has good stuff too. So just want to play, man. Find out who's better as part of it. But on a Tuesday this late in the year, to me it's kind of more about, um, you know, keeping guys involved and keeping them on track to develop. And with, uh, I think Sean sent me the stat with the 10 run rule thing. I know we lost over a game this year uh, of innings. So that's a lot of at-bats um, that you'd like to see Ryan Miller get and a couple more appearances that you'd like to see Fitzy or somebody get, J.J. Garcia. Uh, but we'll take what we got tonight. So maybe they'll let us add a game or two uh, when those numbers start piling up for the 10-run rule for those people that like it. What can you say about how Hollis pitched today? He was outstanding. I mean, basically made it impossible to take him out of the game. Um, part of it was the score dictated that. You'd like to... You know, um, you'd l hopefully at home, you'd like to separate yourself a little bit and create a little more flexibility where you can get guys in and out of there. But at that point in the game, he made it hard to take the ball out of his hand. And I was going to ask him how he was feeling, but the radar gun and the way he was throwing it kind of made it look like he was fresh. But in reality, he got a, as much work in as he, as he could have, um, you know, this week because he's made a couple other appearances. Uh, but at the start of the day, after five innings, we're not playing them again, so it's over with if, uh, you know, the rain comes and, you know, Jenkins comes in there almost basically for a save because if it's only a five-inning game, you know, but, but it, it turned out what it was. What's all it's been like to sort of work with the past few years? I know you, sometimes guys step in and play right away. Sometimes guys kind of have to work their way through it and kind of get disappointed and then get better. What, what's he been like through this process? Yeah, I, I think he's always been the same guy uh, mentality-wise around the park. He always likes to sing. I don't know how good of a voice it is, but he always likes to sing. Um, he's not afraid to compete. He'll put in his work. He's a low maintenance guy. Um, and then on game day, there's just been varying results, I think with varying personality. And the Tennessee Tech outing stands out. Last year here, we, we give him a start. and Basically, we're kind of, you know, providing him an opportunity to win the fourth starter role, and it didn't go very well. And I don't think it – it went that way because he doesn't have good enough stuff or he wasn't trying hard. It's just some of these guys need to be out there and find their personality with two strikes or coming out of the pen in a jam or how they're going to handle a start um, in, in different situations that, that come up in a game. That's experience. I mean, all these freshmen in this league are so talented. They can go out there and get it done. Um, but you got to kind of be, you know, with your cleats in the ground, feeling out or vibing out a situation to understand maybe a way you need to adjust or try something and see if it works or not. And I think right now he's found his game day personality. How encouraging was it to see Blake get a couple of base hits tonight? What do you think the key is for him to get back on track next season? I really think just to stay athletic in his swing. Um, you know, he gets, I say running at the ball, it may not make sense, maybe charging at the ball. But ultimately when he's athletic in his legs, it, it looks like a really pretty swing and it also becomes a productive swing. And I think he and Coach E got in it in the cage and got after it, working on that in particular. Uh, but then also um, just, just some conversations around the park. Um, if, if it's something he wants to, to get better at. And again, it's a little bit of a feel. You, you look at how many at-bats he's tallied up last year combined with this year. Um, there might be a guy out there in the country that's a leadoff guy, like a Jackson Gray for Kentucky that leads off every game. 
he might have more at-bats just in this one year um, than Blake does in his entire career. And on top of that, he's got about four years on him age-wise. So, um, you know, he's learning. And he's getting better as he goes. Do you expect to have Sticky ready for this weekend? What was it like to have him out first base coaching? Um, strange. Um, but he liked it. And uh, after a while, he started speaking up a little bit. Uh, you know, Ricky was a warrior on the field. And that's, that's a good thing. I think as a coach, he's, he's done a tremendous job for us. But he had like 102 point something fever. And uh, he, he needed to go home. And the rain delay basically allowed Woody a chance to say, go home. Uh, so Jared took over that role. But he's, he's important to have around in the locker room. It'll be at the hotel this weekend, just on the field and, and, and kind of being a part of things. Whether he's able to play or not, it'll probably be the hitting that comes first before the defense. Uh, but I think there's an opportunity where he could do something for us this weekend. Yeah, that was great. I mean, you could hear it in the guy's tone of their voices when they're yelling out from the dugout. I mean, it's impossible not to like that guy and, and his whole family, really, to be honest with you. But just good to see him out there, especially after a scare. It was a scare for everybody. And then when the, you know, kind of the information was there, I think he was still scared. And for good reason. I think all of us would be. Uh, but just for him to settle back in composure-wise and get out there and pitch was one thing. But to be able to pitch in some difficult situations, and if it's probably if it's not so wet, Zane makes that play, and he has basically a, you know, I don't want to say flawless, but a pretty pretty dang good night. Uh, so all in all, great to see him out there, and it also was good stuff. Talk more with South Carolina this weekend and just how important a week it is for you guys. Yeah, I think they're playing right now, and um, you know, every SEC game is weighted the same, but. You know, you'd like to make progress as the year goes on, and um, I can't speak for where they're at with everything. I know they've they've had some really good wins. Uh, they go into Fayetteville and win a game, which we were not able to. But I think there's no kind of beating around the bush. We need to we need to go on the road and, and play better um, overall. Or if you really want to look at it, I think we need to pick up where we left off with our trip down to Georgia, and, and kind of you know replicate that same mentality, same effort, and, and see where it gets us. And maybe pay attention to what are the one or two areas that maybe all of us, including myself, can do a little bit better over the course of the weekend. So um, finals will be over for everyone officially. I've kind of jumped the gun on that a little bit, but by the time we get on that bus, that'll be the case. Uh, we'll get in there, we'll do our normal pre-series practice uh, that each of the teams do. We'll just start a day earlier and, um, you know, the easiest or best way to, to try and win a series is, is to compete in the first game. But um, you know, they're at home. It's a tough place to play. I'm sure they expect to hold court or hold serve there. Um, I don't know what our guys' mentality is other than they're glad they won for their seniors tonight. And, you know, they're able to get out of here and get packed up for tomorrow. You just mentioned those seniors, another senior day. Just what does that group mean to you? Yeah, it's a pretty cool group. And it's, it's, it's a little more odd for our sport. Not that others don't deal with a professional draft, but for ours and then ever since COVID. And you got a couple guys that just, I mean, Ethan Payne, um, is one that's been around and he's been a part of a lot of different things in this program. But then you got Griffin and Zane, and, and I don't mean to select a few, you know, three out of the six and leave anybody out, but um, even in their short time, they've created a lot of history. I mean, Griffin's got a couple home runs that I'd like to think there's a few uh, places he can go and get a free meal or free whatever it is. I mean, they got students over our dugout wanting me to go to Cool Beans. I'm not going there, but maybe Griff shows up there and, and he gets. <laughs> You, you know, some complimentary or NIL. I, I don't, I'm not trying to create any deals, but you know, that group's made their mark. And we've, we've had to make progress here in a bunch of different areas. Um, and it, it doesn't happen with just one or two individuals. And it's certainly not gonna happen with a coaching staff without getting help from the players. So um, a special group, I was glad they're able to be recognized. And some of those guys had really good nights too. Anything else? Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thanks,